CO2 and sepsis have a very interesting correlation. And so what it happens here is that we have a couple things that are happening. First off, when we have sepsis, we typically have low perfusion. And we ultimately end up in a situation where we have an increase in hydrogen, creating a metabolic acidosis. Now, when that occurs, what we're going to do is we're going to try and compensate for that by sending a lot of this hydrogen, binding it with our bicarb, creating carbonic acid, sending it to the lungs to split it into CO2 and water, and ultimately blowing off as much CO2 as possible to normalize our hydrogen, which ultimately is going to create a decrease in CO2. And so that's why we often are going to be using a nasal cannula end tidal CO2 for our sepsis patients in order to identify a disrangement here where we have an increased respiratory rate in order to blow off more CO2 to compensate for the increase in hydrogen from sepsis. That's why it's important to monitor your CO2 in sepsis patients to see if you can pick up on this compensation factor to make sure that we are treating our sepsis patients as early as possible.